Okay, uh, happy Halloween, everyone. I uh, feel like doing a little recorded magic, talking to myself and, and you, I suppose. Um, I am dressed as Destruction from the Sandman comics and now Netflix series, although he is not in the show. Fingers crossed, maybe they'll cast me. I have no acting experience, or nor do I live in L.A., uh, or England, or wherever they film the show, but, I mean, come on, like, I'm nailing it. Uh, I just need a bindle, and then German Shepherd, Barnaba, Barnabas, however you say it, and I think I'd be good to go. Uh, we are going to play some Jumpstart, I think. Jump in. I always call it Jumpstart, but called jump in now um so yeah let's do that we'll spend our coins since those are easy to get hmm balanced naomi pillar of order three white black whenever pillar of order enters or attacks if you control an artifact and an enchantment create a 2-2 two -two white samurai creature token with vigilance that seems like a pretty strict requirement um, although that would be good in this new deck that I just thought about building for Brawl, um, Rattatabrask of Urborg or whatever, which is kind of a Legendaries Matter, um, zombie tribal. Uh, I really like Tricky. I certainly could use another Balmore. I could always use more Azid spells for my decks. Um... Never tried a ninjutsu deck, but I don't love the mechanic. I don't love, you know, sneaking these creatures out. Um, I think I'm going to pick, I always go is it, so I think I'm going to pick balanced and hope we get a complimentary pick. Yeah, okay, we did, we did. Uh, when it just created a blood token, that would give us artifacts. When it attacks, you may sack the blood token if you do. It's plus two, plus two until end of turn. Minions, sack another creature, draw a card, then transform. I think we're going to pick training. Or no, wait, training. Sorry. Two white, two one, flying, and training, which I don't know what training does. I think we're going to pick Bloodthirsty. Balance Bloodthirsty. Because that will at least ensure we get our enchantments, and I would ass or our artifacts. And I would assume that Balanced is, given that was the card they showed us, is going to have artifacts and enchantments as well. So let's pick Bloodthirsty. Confirm pick. Add to decks, as always. Let's check out what we got. We have two blood fountains. Artifact for a black. When it enters, create a blood token. Pay three black. Tap. Sack it. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. So you have a little graveyard recursion. Cutthroat contender. A black. Uh, pay a life. It gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Activate only once each turn. So, kind of an aggro, threatening attacker. Uh, spirited companion. When it enters, draw a card. That's good. Pay it. one mana for a 1-1, one, one, one mana for a card. That's good. Life of Toshiro Umezawa. Uh, as it enters, and after you draw a step out of lore, sacrifice after 3. Choose 1. Target creature gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. Or target creature gets minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. You gain 2 life. And that is our first and second step. And then 3, exile... Saga, return it, um, transformed. So then we get a 2-3 human samurai, tap, pay a life, add black, spend this mana only to cast an instant or sorcery spell. Doesn't seem great, but seems versatile. Uh, parasitic grasp, uh, one to black. Parasitic grasp deals three damage to target creature, you gain, or target human creature, you gain three life. 
if I pay it for its cleave cost, I may remove human. So, for two mana at instant speed, I deal three damage to target creature and gain three life. For three mana, did I say three mana? Yeah, for three for three mana. Either way, I I can destroy target or deals three damage to target creature. It's much much better, and the cleave cost is not too steep. Restless Blood Seeker. At the beginning of your end step, if you gained life, create a blood token. So, again, helping us get our artifacts. Sack two blood tokens. Transform it. Activate only the sorcery. At the beginning of your end step, if you gained life, create a blood token. Pay four black. Each opponent loses two life, and you gain two life. That's not bad. A 1-3 for two mana. Sack two blood tokens. It becomes 3-3. Three, three. Uh, that gains us more blood tokens. Virus Beetle, Artifact Creature. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. I like that. Intercessor's Arrest. Two white, enchant permanent. It can't attack, block, or crew vehicles. Its activated abilities can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. So it's going to help us shut down Planeswalkers or really any other activated ability permanent. Falcon Wrath Forebear. Flying 3 1 for 3 mana can't block. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, create a blood token. Pay a black, sack two blood tokens, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's good. Gluttonous Guest. When it enters, create a blood token. Whenever you sack a blood token, you gain a life. Three mana for a one four. Not bad. Nizumi Blade Blesser. Two and a black. It has death touch as long as you control an artifact, and has menace as long as you control an enchantment. I'm not seeing a lot of enchantments in this deck. Unfortunately. Uh, two and a black for a 2-3. When it enters, each opponent loses two life. You gain two life. Soul transfer. White, or, you know, colorless black black. Choose one. If you control an artifact and an enchantment, you may choose both. Exile target creature or planeswalker. Return target creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to your hand. That's pretty good. Circuit mender. When it enters, you gain two life. When it leaves, draw a card. Three mana for a 2-3. That's... Also very good. Funny of the Moss. Oh, I forgot. Life of Tomashima Ozawa is an enchantment. And Befriending the Moths, also an enchantment. Uh, steps 1 and 2. Target creature you control gains... Gets plus 1 plus 1 and gains flying until end of turn. And then exile it. Return to the battlefield transformed. And it's a 2-4 flyer. So 2-4 flyer for 4 mana. That pumps our creatures and gains flying for 2 turns. Not terrible. Vampire Scrivener, uh, for three and a black. Flying, whenever you gain life during your turn, put a 1-1 counter on Vampire Scrivener. Whenever you lose life during your turn, put a 1-1 counter on Vampire Scrivener. That's that's solid. I like that. Blood Crazed Socialite, three and a black. When it enters the battlefield, create a blood token. Whenever it attacks, you may sack a blood token. If you do, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Forgive me, I'm getting a phone call. Oh, potential spam. We'll just let that play out. Listen to that ringtone, though. I love this. Sorry, doing a little bit of the white overbite there. Yeah, potential spam. Fuck off. Oh, but I got a text. I'm going to check that quick. I can respond to that later. Uh, Blood Care Socialite, we read that. Kami of Terrible Secrets, 3 in the black for a 3 4. When it enters, if you control an artifact and an enchantment, you draw a card and gain a life. Uh, and then finally, another enchantment, 2 black black. Enchanted, enchant artifact creature you control when it enters the battlefield, destroy target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. As long as enchanted permanent is a creature, it gets plus one plus one. So. You have the versatility to not use it on creatures to be able to destroy a dark creature or planeswalker. Um, but that's nice. That's nice. I like that. Wedding security. Three black black. When it attacks, you may sack a blood token. If you do, put a 1-1 counter on it and draw a card. We 
are making enough blood tokens that it's pretty much a guaranteed. So when we swing in, we're at 5-5 five, five for 5, and we draw a card. Not bad. Naomi Pillar of Order, kind of the flagship card here. Uh, when it enters the battlefield or attacks, if you control an artifact and an enchantment, create a 2-2 two, two white samurai creature token with vigilance. So at least she makes an effect when you cast her, even if you don't get to attack and get the second token. So really, it seems to me like this deck, you know, we need to to keep, keep uh, track of our artifacts and our blood tokens and and pay attention on when to use them to transform or to get other things it seems like we have enough blood token synergy that we should not sack them simply for um where let me see just to draw a card but we could um seems like it'd be better off to save them to maintain having an artifact on the battlefield really wish there were more enchantments in this deck does not seem like there are enough enchantments to to reliably trigger Naomi Pillar of Order or the other cards we have that say artifacts matter um Make it be good, but it's slow. Um, yeah, but okay. So, let's play with that. Let me hit my vapes. That does much today. Alright, we got tap land. And no creature we can play on the first turn. But we can play the rest of our hand. We don't have an enchantment, which is unfortunate. But we will get an artifact, so we'll keep this. I didn't check if I was on the play or not. I was not. Okay. Um, we got... How do I zoom in? Well, that doesn't help me, because I've got the thing. Can I drag it over? No. All right. Uh, flying, whenever you gain life, put a 1-1 counter on it. Whenever you lose life, put a 1-1 counter on it. So that's that's pretty good. Oh, no, no, no. Let's play our tap land. Since it won't matter anyway. Um, double white. I'm imagining they're playing a white spirit angel deck. Probably, um, Blood Fountain. No, we want to play a creature. We want to answer their, we want to answer their, each opponent discards a card. Is there a card that I can bring back? No. So I think I play this to be able to block. No, wait till we get some some junk in our hand, extra land or something that we can discard to Virus Beetle. Must they must have a pump spell? Do I want them to use that? Uh, no, I don't. No blocks. Pillar of Order, we need a white. But that's okay. Um, Death Touch. So I could play this. We get a blood token. Which means now a creature from your graveyard to your hand. I think I keep that. I think I play this. 
attacks to combat. Um, we will attack. And then we will cast Virus Beetle. Make them discard a card. We will discard... Um, Probably Naomi, because each opponent. Oh, okay. We don't need. To, oh, we don't need to worry about it. Okay, cool. And then we'll create a blood. Uh, we'll play Blood Fountain. So now we have an artifact. So at least she gets Death Touch, which is good. Oh, white blue, scrubby white blue spirits. This is a good deck in Jumpstart. Uh, no blocks. We'll take the damage. Hey, there we go. Planes. Let's keep, let's keep that around. Um, next. Disturb. Whenever Brianbound Gift enters the battlefield, the enchanted creature becomes the target of an aura. Create a 1 1 spirit, remove it within the graveyard, exile it instead. Um, yeah, I'd rather hold back to be able to block that. No attacks. And let's play Vampire Scrivener. Just to curb out. Now we can at least block their 1 1. Although, I feel like they have a pump spell. The discard. Well, they can't. I think I block Draw's Call and Brian Tillman. And an enchantment. I do not control an enchantment. Um, we can block this. We can block this. So I think I swing in. Scrivener. Let them think I have something to I don't. Artifact. So we, on their turn, I may discard. I may use my blood token. I kind of want to keep it around to flip him. 
Whenever it attacks, target a creature an opponent controls gets minus two, minus zero. It's disturb. All that. This is not shaping up to be a good match for us. They're thinking about their attacks. Damn it. Another one one is not good. They're gonna be aggressive. damage they can attack no blocks bummer I need an enchantment maybe next turn I get an enchantment that's cheap enough that I can do this No, I don't. You're just going to beat me down with flyers. Combat. I think I'm playing suboptimally this this round here. Um, but white blue spirits is always a hard deck. They didn't jump in. They just get so much they get so much control of their board state and they have so much graveyard recursion that uh, it becomes very hard to deal with. Planeswalker. Simple play soul transfer.
We're just not making enough blood tokens to... And it phases out, right? Is that what it says? Fuck. Not good. This oh, and I only only have the one blood token. God damn it. End turn. Not good. Not good. I don't think I win this match. And I bet they've got something... not want that. Um, they're tapped out. You can sack a blood token and gain a life. Creates another blood token, right? Oh no, that I gain a life. Um, and next, um, swing with all. And turn, we'll do Blood Fountain on their turn. Block three damage next turn. And an enchantment. Play this. Play. Let's 
combat. Stop their drug skull. I don't know what they have in their hand, but if they counter, then I'm dead. Let them have the I'll let them have the win. Bummer. Bummer. Yeah. I mean I I'm never very confident facing uh blue white spirits. Um and then this deck particularly didn't it just didn't have enough enchantments to, to trigger any of its key spells. No matter what I'd have played there, that have countered it. I feel like I probably made some blunders there anyway, but yeah, you know, it's a bummer. But we'll play another match. We'll try to at least get a win and get the card. What time is it? Five thirty-six. spell here.
Okay, sorry about that. Um, I will be right back, and we will do another match with the stack, see if we can't make it work, get an enchantment a little bit earlier in the game.
almost back. on I've got COVID unfortunately um, my roommate got it I got it from him he masked up but you're living with someone there's just no way to avoid it really when you're that close I mean some people get lucky I've had all my boosters and shots and everything but it's, you, know, you live you live that close to someone you're gonna get it I feel like um, so I've been wearing the bandana around the house to pop up just to make sure he doesn't get it you know we don't ping pong it back and forth between each other i think my cat might actually have it i don't know she seems fine she's eating and peeing like normal she's playing she's going on the porch doing all the stuff she does but and it's cold out so it would explain why she's sleeping a lot but she's just really listless and sleeping a lot and wanting to be in my lap more than normal and i think she might have it too which so she's probably what passed it between my roommate and i um, it's a bummer. I've been out of work for... God, what now? I worked... Man, five or six days? Let me check here. Um... My roommate got COVID. symptoms so Thursday so Thursday Friday yeah so I didn't work Friday didn't work Saturday didn't work Sunday didn't work Monday won't work Tuesday and then I'll be back on Wednesday um, I'm with my boss here he's like uh, where did he say it Glad you feel good. Did you wash your bandana that you were wearing? Do you think it could have just been in that? Yeah, well, if it was in that, then it's in my lungs, dumbass. Um, I'm like, I'm not sure I follow what you're saying, but I leave the bandana at work. You put the Q-tip up your nose for 15 seconds, so I don't think COVID being on a surface would affect anything. I didn't know you left it at work. I was thinking you might have brought it home so you were breathing in stuff on it. Right which would give me COVID. Like, that wouldn't cause the test to show COVID when I didn't really have it. I didn't wipe the Q-tip on the bandana that I had around my face, so if it had COVID on it, I'd be breathing it in anyway. It just, he is so out of touch with how this works. Although I will give him credit for letting me stay at home when the rules between the CDC, the WHO, the Minnesota Department of Health, all those are murky at best about what you're supposed to do. But he listened to me when I was like, hey man, I know it sucks having me out, but if anyone else gets it, not only is their life at risk, but the business. I mean, we can't afford to have three people out of a department, you know. Um, so I do appreciate that he worked it out and let me stay home, even though I wasn't really sick. Um, thankfully, you know, been able to game, get some videos recorded, take care of some laundry, do some other random bullshit around the house. That's been really nice. Um, and I felt a little bit like, you know, it's been however many years now. I'm a frontline worker. I never got it. I did all my shots. I wore my mask. And I knew so many people who got paid days off, you know, two weeks off during the thick of it where they weren't sick. I mean, they were infected. And obviously, you don't want it to spread, but, I mean, they basically just got a vacation, you know. They got a paid vacation to sit at home. They weren't, they had a runny nose, or they had a sore throat, or they had just super minor symptoms. 
and I was always kind of like, man, I want to get a case where it's super minor and I get to stay away from everyone and stay at home. And hey, finally did. So that's been kind of nice. Um, got my juice box, microdosed some mushrooms. Huge fan of that. If you guys are dealing with depression, anxiety, or just need a kind of a perspective shift in your life, highly recommend microdosing mushrooms. Um, depending on where you live, they might be difficult to get. A very small amount. Um, I would suggest something like a hundred milligrams or something. Take it in the morning. Uh, grind the mushrooms up with a coffee grinder. Pour them in a glass of water. Just chug it. Won't taste too bad. Drink some juice to chase it. Whatever. And you won't really notice anything. It's it's really it's really weird how it works where you all of a sudden in the middle of the day you're just kind of like huh my attitude's better i just feel better about stuff i'm not dwelling on the negative i'm not stuck in this negative feedback loop in my brain about you know stuff that doesn't really matter i'm not overthinking things i just have a more positive attitude it's great i mean i think everybody should also trip once in their life but if that's not something you're interested in do some research on microdosing highly recommended um Another thing I do fairly frequently is Kratom, and I'm not going to pretend that, you know, a lot of that isn't just for fun, but it does a huge benefit to your dietary, uh, your, your, your bowel movements and stuff like that. You're basically drinking a thing of Metamucil every day if you do the powder in the water like I do. Um, and then, ooh, I should grab my caffeine. So one sec here. Oops. Oops. Kicked everything. Lost the connection to server. Reconnect. Um, caffeine just makes it kind of kick in harder. Let me read this text quick. Um, but on top of just being kind of fun, it, it is really a positive. You can use it in small amounts. Sorry, one more. All right, this will be a longer one. Connection lost. Why do I keep losing my connection to server? Whatever. Um.
Okay, a little bit of uh, connect again. A little bit of a. Uh, I'm in a union, the meat cutter, and uh, we've got negotiations coming up. So uh, just kind of plotting with my my comrade about how we're gonna take my boss to the cleaners, and get these fucking low-ranked frontline employees. So, it's so frustrating during the thick of COVID to go back to that. Hearing people be like, oh, thank you for working. You're a hero. And then three months later, not even be willing to wear a mask because there's no mandate or whatever. It's like, cover your mouth. Stay home when you're sick. These are not new concepts. But the economy, it's costing everyone way more with all the fucking deaths and the lost productivity from not letting people stay home and not paying them to stay home. And then when you look at the whole, oh, people got paid more to stay home than they did make it work. Yeah, everyone I know that did that went to fucking college or got a better job because they had that money. They didn't just fuck off and spend it on drugs, which is what every Republican seems to think. They were doing prep work at a fucking taco restaurant and instead got however many weeks of of being paid to stay at home and they went to school to be a fucking nurse or an IT professional or a you know they moved up the chain they added more to the economy because of that money where people like me ha why does this keep happening I'm just gonna hit play right away we'll see what happens let me drink this Ick. Ick. taking so long to enter match because I have some sort of connection problem or what's going on let me check my internet yeah looks good check out my phone too looks good there too so I don't know Check status. Maybe magic's down. And in which case, uh, we'll probably end the video. I gotta come up with some thumbnails for some of these. I've got, I don't know, four or five in the bank. It's been lazy as far as uploading and staying consistent with a play schedule, coming up with sort of an episodic for format for how I'm going to do this.
This doesn't seem to be doing anything. Let's just reconnect. Cancel. See what happens. What is going on? I have internet connection. You know what? So, alright. We're just going to take this opportunity. Close out of the video. Thank you, everyone. Um, we'll edit this together a little bit. Make it a little less choppy. A little less downtime. And, uh, yeah. See you next time.